Welcome to my class on T independent antigens and B cell activation. In this video, we will see about T independent antigens and how they induce and activate the B cells to produce the antibodies. What are T independent and T dependent antigens? During humoral immune response, antibody production is brought about by the B lymphocytes. Based on the ability to induce antibody formation, antigens can be classified into T independent and T dependent antigens. Some antigens can directly induce the B cells to produce the antibodies and are called T independent antigens. However, some antigens require the help of T lymphocytes for the production of antibodies from the B cells and these antigens are called T dependent antigens. T independent antigens Most of the protein antigens require the help of T cells for the production of antibodies by the B lymphocytes. However, Antigens like bacterial capsular polysaccharides and bacterial lipopolysaccharides and some polymeric proteins like flagellar protein flagellin can directly stimulate the B cells to produce antibodies without the involvement of T cells. They can directly activate the B cells without antigen processing and presentation to the T cells. Such antigens are called T cell or thymus independent antigens. They are structurally simple and carry repeating epitopes. These repeating epitopes cross link the B cell receptors on the B cells and act as first signal of activation. Even though T lymphocytes are not involved in antibody production, they assist the B cell proliferation and differentiation. For complete activation of B cells, a dual signal is required and the second signal usually comes from T cells. But here, the second signal will not come from T cells as the T cells are not involved, so the second signal should come from other sources. T independent antigens are metabolized slowly and remain in the body for long periods. There are two types of T independent antigens TI1 antigens and TI2 antigens. TI1 antigens are usually bacterial lipopolysaccharides which have mitogenic properties and can deliver dual signal to the B cells by themselves. First signal is binding of B cell receptor to the T independent antigen. The second signal is the binding to the lipid moiety of the lipopolysaccharide with the CD14 or TLR of the B cells. TLRs or the tall like receptors are receptor proteins help in the recognition of wide array of pathogens and are found on membranes of leukocytes including the dendritic cells, macrophages, natural killer cells, also on the immune cells like T cells and B cells and on non-immune cells like epithelial, endothelial cells and fibroblast. TI2 antigens are compounds like polysaccharides without mitogenic properties and also flagellin. They activate B cells in a different way. They contain multiple repeats of limited number of sugar molecules which will cause excessive cross-linking of B cell receptors. This will deliver strong signals that can compensate the need for co-stimulatory signals from T cells. In this case, the second signal can be the interactions of tall-like receptors with PAMPS 
or interactions with the factors from the complement system. PAMPs are pathogen associated molecular patterns found on infectious agents which are recognized by toll like receptors. Once the B cells are activated by the T independent antigens, they undergo clonal proliferation and daughter cells differentiate into plasma cells. Plasma cells are antibody factories that secrete large quantities of antibodies. Antibodies produced by T independent antigens are mainly IgM antibodies. Type switching to IgG can take place with the help of only T lymphocytes. Here there is no production of memory cells or no immunological memory. Hence the immune response is effective in primary infection and not effective in secondary infection and also short lived. Immune response by T independent antigens are also dose dependent means too little antigen is not immunogenic and too much antigen can cause immunological tolerance than immunity. Thus, we can summarize like this. T independent antigens are structurally simple and composed of limited number of repeating epitopes. They include molecules like bacterial capsular polysaccharides, bacterial lipopolysaccharides, and some polymeric proteins like flagellar protein flagellin. Immune response by T independent antigen is dose dependent. That means too little antigen is non immunogenic and too much of antigen can cause immunological tolerance. T independent antigens do not require preliminary processing by the antigen processing cells. The antibody response by T independent antigens are limited to IgM and there is no isotype switching. Immune response by T independent antigens are weak and no immunological memory. They are metabolized slowly and will remain in the body for long periods. That's all for today. Thank you for your patient listening. Thank you so much.